Hey Metropolis viewers, this is Josh reporting from the Southwest United States. Um, I'm flying to Phoenix, Arizona right now from New York and I'm going to interview Sean. He's a guy that is pretty average, uh, lives alone, um, middle-aged dude, works in like IT or something like that. But um, the strange thing about Sean is that he's part of a movement of people who want to change their sexual preferences. Here in the United States, we have a therapy for everything. And these people are intent on changing one of the most fundamental things that make us human, who we are attracted to. Let's go see if it's possible. This is a project I've been wanting to do for a long time. I, I really want to get it stuff organized. Nope, these are books, but not pictures. I'm hoping to come across these pictures of when I was a kid. They kind of show the joyful little boy I once was. Where they are, I don't know. All my friends are dead. <laughs> I have 3,284 friends. I've just never met any of them face to face. <laughs> All my friends are so last season. That's kind of gay, huh? I have a workout machine here. But what I did find is when I was working out at when I was working out at home, I act, it was kind of isolating in itself. I was just by myself. I was near my computer, so I could zip over there and get myself in trouble. <laughs> That's be in there. Actually, this is one of my work things. I, I didn't know his name. I just said, boy, next door. He was muscular. When he first moved in, all the neighbor kids were in his front yard while he taught them to exercise. I watched him from the window and was too shy to go out and meet him. I really wanted to join them. Our upstairs windows... <laughs> I get emotional at these times like this. It's old pain. Our upstairs windows lined up with each other and one night he appeared to be masturbating to a magazine. After that I made a point of masturbating when they when I thought he could see me in my house. So where are we? Uh, the park. One of my old haunts from years ago. Yeah, a bunch of little roads around here. I'm sure there's still people out here doing it. <laughs> uh, there's somebody sitting there, who knows. <laughs> or they just be sitting in vehicles or walking around. Like this guy over here. You're my wingman, huh? <laughs> I was probably just... I'm trying to see what it would feel like, what something would feel like. Yeah. Experimental point stage, I guess. I still had those feelings at 54. So it's a lot of years of struggling back and forth, you know. What's, what's this about? I wanted to be married, I wanted to have kids, I wanted all that. I wanted a normal life, you know. I look at it this way. I was meeting lots of men over my all this time, having lots of sex, <laughs> and at the end had no friends. I'm like, what's wrong with this picture? I mean, yeah, they hung out together. They did gay marches. They did gay pride. I didn't have any roadmap for how to do that. It's isolation. So yeah, at 54, I started searching the net. Maybe there's something out there. I really wanted to change. I hated this life. Hey, Sean, Arthur Goldberg calling. How are you? Well, it's okay. Look, that's, that's what I'm here for. I'm, I'm here to help mentor. And if you're freaking out, that's pro it's appropriate for you to call me. Not a problem. And that, the, that the therapist that you've been working with is not gay affirmative, but but, but instead as someone who believes in gender affirmation, that believes in helping you, you know, get back in touch with the, the, your own gender. Homosexuality at its core is a relationship deficit and therefore can be healed only in healthy non-sexual relationships with other men. It's, it's the converse of what a lot of laymen would think 
that, oh my God, you know, all you need to know is learn, learn how to relate to a woman. That's step two. Step one is learning how to relate to a man. So give me a buzz at your convenience. I started Jonah together with Elaine Burke, uh, my co-director. I was searching for some option for people who are looking to overcome same-sex attraction and to provide support as well for parents, spouses who may be interested in some family member who may have gotten involved in same-sex attraction issues. This is Arthur Goldberg calling. Uh, Ira had told me to give him a buzz that he had a 15-year-old boy that was concerned about the issue that come to him, so I was trying to be of help. <laughs> I hear you, I hear you. Every person that we work with is really a heterosexual person who may have a homosexual problem. The evidence is there. There, there is no proof. The gay gene, the gay genome has been studied. They found no gay gene or genes. We like to consider ourselves the uh, Weight Watchers or the AA for people with unwanted same-sex attractions. You know, it's interesting. The, the oldest guy that ever came into our programs was 72. And, that was, and, he, and he had been in the gay lifestyle for like 50 years. It was amazing. After a couple of years, he was down in Florida with the retirees. Got Not a, a problem finding a nice lady. He got a nice, <laughs> you know, uh, woman down there who had been married, had kids, all that kind of thing. He was, young, he was still young and vigorous, and I think he ended up actually marrying this woman. Uh, for his first marriage at age 74 or 75. Good I mean, for him. God bless him. Right, yeah, right. <laughs> You're not becoming a different kind of person. You're just dealing with some of your issues and becoming more of the person you were meant to be. Black and white, you know, kind of, you know, I mean, they're just using facts and explaining why, why the causes and all these, all these things. And so that immediately appealed to me. So it turned out there was someone in, in the valley here in Phoenix area. Hey, Hello, Sean. How you doing? Good. Good. Good to see you. Come on back. You got lots of goodies back here in the corner. Yeah. You going to the picnic or <laughs> handing those out? Yeah, we've got those for some of the kids that we've oh. been working with in group. Well, I'm a big kid. <laughs> you want one of those? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm fine. Rice yeah, crispy treat. <laughs> I'll wait till after. How is life treating you? It's all a lone, very lonely sure. world out there. It's amazing. It doesn't matter how many men you get together with. Yeah. You end up alone. Yeah. yeah. The old wounds, all those things, still working on those. It. Yeah. Well, you're doing it well, Sean. You had legitimate needs to feel loved by other men, to be wanted by other men, but that the only way you knew how to do that was through sexual means. I was a man. I knew <laughs> I knew I was a man. I never confused my gender, but um, I still didn't feel like I was like they were. You know, they were this and I was something else. Sure. You didn't feel validated. You didn't feel important especially in the group of men, mm -hmm. doing things men do. Is it uh, easy for you now to see how all of those needs for a dad and, and uh, to connect with the guys, uh, that that's what had been sexualized? Mm -hmm. It's a matter of feeling confident that you can get out there and be with the guys. Would that be something we might write down as an action assignment, some learning how to do some things that the boys do? You might find that it's really satisfying. How about a hug? You bet. Take Keep care. up the good work. All right, I will. <laughs> Look at yourself, dude. You're really hard on yourself. You always tell yourself you're not good looking, you're not adequate. So, oh, look at that. Honestly, it does touch your mask and when you can do something yourself. <laughs> You're the equal. You have that connection, you have friends, and the women too. <laughs> How determined are you? Oh, I'm extremely determined. I, I, would, I want it out of this life. What I needed to do was get back out there in some way hang out with guys in non-sexual ways. So I joined a gym again. But this time I looked out totally different. I wasn't going to the cruise. <laughs> I was going there to talk to men. 
especially men that were well built and perfect, you know, in my eyes. Black with women, every set counts. Yeah, focus. Usually when you see a guy like that, you don't know anything about him, but you see this image. And so later on, you're fantasizing about it, you know. I especially went up to them and talked to them. How's it going? Yeah. Yeah? I'm meeting women, but they're not I, I finally found one. Of them with Did you? A year. Met her on Match.com. Is she an egg? No. Well, they all <laughs> nag. Oh, okay. It's just how much you can tolerate. <laughs> Has this happened to you? That's right. Came close. Oh, gee, really? Then really? I found out she had a bigger set than I did. Yeah. <laughs> well, you got to know when to get out. You keep your stuff tight and you move. <laughs> I, just, I just tuck it back and sleep with my dad. There you yeah, go. Right. There you go. It was nice that the guys at the gym were saying how I was changing and all that. and mm -hmm. um, So that was good to hear. But I found it even better to, which I probably got more from people at church, is, uh, what kind of man I am, you know, inside. What kinds of things did they say to you? Oh, I don't know, just um, probably mention how warm I am with the kids and, and things like that. You know, you're natural for that. Okay. Um, whenever I have an experience like that, it just makes me feel really good inside. That, you know, I'm a guy like everybody else. <laughs> I used to look like this. <laughs> when I feel down, all I think about is, man, I overcame SSA. <laughs> and my life is so much better. I guess, like, do you have any doubts about whether or not the sexual attraction is real if you haven't tried it yet? No, because the attraction's there, and um, I... <laughs> I, if, I, if, if I'm thinking about it while I'm laying in bed, my body just jerks. It's like, oh, I want it. <laughs> it's just like, you know, it's, it's, there's that power there. I'm like any man. <laughs> you know, you, do I ask her out? You know, <laughs> am I going to get rejected? <laughs> so this is just, this is matches they send. These don't look too promising. <laughs> this, she's nice looking. I'm going to my website, Catholic Match. Usually they'll send me emails to tell me that someone's looked at my profile or... I do like this. <laughs> they have a category, a few extra pounds. I'm going, oh, okay. <laughs> I, I kind of don't like a really large woman <laughs> because I, <laughs> I, like feeling, I like the masculine feeling of being a stronger one <laughs> and that I can protect this person. So I generally want someone on a smaller side for that reason. No, that's part of it. But honestly, I think if you just met the right person and we just click and... She had an easygoing attitude. I think that's what I'm really looking for. Somebody that's not nitpicky and naggy. <laughs> I met a couple of different women. I went to New York, meet one. And then Louisiana, meet another. I actually enjoy dating now. I really like it. Just couldn't get to that point where I would have thought I was in love with her and vice versa. One didn't like my past very well either. I thought she'd be more understanding, but she wasn't. It's, a, it's kind of a problem too. How come you can't film with any of your friends? Well, because they would want to, first of all, want to know why, <laughs> why they're filming, and I haven't really told them about my past. Some have children and they might be afraid that I may be a bad influence on them. I don't know. If they, if they thought that I was, if gay, well, if, if I couldn't change or whatever, I hadn't changed. Ex-gays are very reluctant to come forward. And the more pressure society puts against us, the harder it is for them to come forward. They don't want to be ridiculed, uh, hated, um, and that's what happens. In the next few years, that's going to be a big focus, is trying to get people who have been successful to come out and to tell their stories. And to tell success doesn't mean that you're never going to feel another same-sex attraction. Just like if you're an obese person and you lose 100 pounds and you pass a bakery, you're going to want to stop in there. The fact that you don't is a tribute to you. Yeah, you're not so different than other guys who have insecurities too. And it sounds like it's, it really is sinking in that people think good of you and getting a lot of validation. You're doing good work and people keep requesting you. Mm -hmm.